Ahoy gamers, Lord Geneva here. In late 2019, this image had surfaced online. It depicts the character Shadow from the Sonic the Hedgehog video game series with the caption, Nice cock. It soon got paired with another image, also depicting Shadow, only this time from a cutscene from the 2005 game Shadow the Hedgehog. The caption read, Too bad. My cock is bigger. The memes spread around the web, with many people creating different versions of the meme using characters from other franchises and featuring them in various videos. Then, it all culminated on January 14, 2020, when user at Kububa on Twitter discovered a printed picture of one of the versions of the meme taped to a wall above a urinal in their school's bathroom. They made a post about it, and it went viral reaching over 150,000 likes. It was shared on every single social media in different parts of the world. When I first discovered the image, I was fascinated by it. I thought, who would risk getting suspended from school to pull off such a useless stunt? And this is when it hit me. Me. I would. This is basically what I've been doing on social media for the past several months. Whether it be the 10 hour sushi livestream, or the Megamind and Plotagon video. It was my gimmick at this point. Make a tweet, ask for likes, if it reaches the amount of likes, I do a stupid thing that requires a lot of hard work and gives me no real payoff and in fact can rule my life forever, and then I upload it online and people say lol. Society at its purest. So I went on Twitter and asked for a reasonable amount of 400 likes and, needless to say, that we'd reached the required amount by the next day. And thus began the greatest saga in history of sagas. Second only to the Candy Crush saga. This is the story of the nice cock operation. I began the work on Monday, January 20th, and gave myself two weeks to prepare. During this time, I would study the layout of the school and the bathroom activity, which is how many people use a specific stall in a specific bathroom at a specific time of the day. I also tried to find a place where I can mass produce the posters in color for a cheap price and possibly find some assistance. I found a partner rather quickly, though. On the first day, I told a girl from my class about my plan and she said she would be glad to help, so we had a brainstorming session. And in the end of it, we decided that it would be an amazing, brilliant, wonderful idea if we were to use alternative versions of the posters for the girls' bathroom. And so we designed the nice tits image, featuring another character from the Sonic franchise, Rouge the Bat. We realized that the plan had become far more ambitious than we expected, because now we had to do the same thing I was doing before, except like, multiplied by two, because we had to do the same thing with Shadow and with Rouge. But despite this, we thought that we knew exactly what we were doing, and we were pretty optimistic. Now that we got that out of the way, it's about time we find a place where we can print the pictures. And it didn't take us too much time to find one, Turns out there is an office right next to our school that allowed people to come in and print anything they wanted for just 33 rubles. Which is very little money for those who don't know. Public transport costs like 55 rubles, I think. So me, the girl, whose name is Dasha by the way, and several of our classmates went to a local McDonald's to have a little snack and chat for a bit. The place just so happened to be right across the street from the office. So after a while, me and Dasha said we would be going home, but instead we went to the office together. Unfortunately, she actually had to go home, so she left pretty quickly. And it was just me, the computer, and random people and staff who were periodically looking at me like I was a wanted criminal. I mean, I, sh I sure did feel like one. But nevertheless, I managed to print a few copies, paid for them, and went back to the McDonald's. When I got back, I realized that all of my classmates were gone, and I was basically alone. And almost out of money. So, in a moment of pure desperation... ...and hunger... ...I ordered a cheeseburger, as it was the cheapest thing on the menu and the only thing I could afford. As I sat there eating my burger with a bunch of nice cock posters in my backpack, 
I thought of everything that brought me to this moment and wondered where this was all gonna go. At the time, it felt kind of like I was on a long journey to fulfill my destiny or something. I know, I know, it sounds stupid and maybe even selfish, but it made me feel hopeful. It made me feel good about myself. So I finished my food, packed up, and went home. I knew that even if I was all alone and miserable in that moment, at least Shadow was there to tell me I had a nice cock. I came back to that office the next day to print the rouge posters and something went wrong with the system so I had to call staff for help. The person who came to help me ended up being female which made the whole thing a little more embarrassing. But after a few minutes of tweaking with the settings, the girl finally managed to get the thing working and I got my rouge posters. I'd be lying if I said I felt no shame, but hey, I got the posters now. Another thing to cross off from the list. Now, the first thing to get out of the way is that schools are legally not allowed to place cameras inside of the bathrooms. So as long as we act normal outside of the bathrooms and don't get caught inside of the bathrooms, we will be safe. Now, our school has four bathrooms, two on the fourth floor and two on the third floor. One of the two bathrooms is for boys and the other one is for girls, logically. And they are located on two different ends of the hall. Our first lesson on Monday is PE, which 90% of the students don't attend, so the school should be relatively empty for about half an hour. For this operation, we will be focusing on bathrooms located on the fourth floor, since our second lesson, and all our lessons, aside from PE for that matter, are on the fourth floor. So we would be able to get to our classroom from the bathroom much quicker, and it would be weird if we used the bathroom that's on the same floor as the classes we don't have today. This might sound like nitpicking, but any impression we make on the people watching the cameras during the first two hours is crucial in the long run. This is why me and Dasha would be talking to each other only through phones, since if one of us got caught, we could easily guess who the partner is through our real-life interactions. This is also why we exchanged all of the items needed for this operation on Friday and put them all in folders, which we would bring to school on Monday. For this to work, we needed a pair of scissors, tape, glue, just in case, and obviously the posters, but that goes without saying. As for the scissors and tape, well, it wouldn't really be too weird for a student to have these items lying around just in case anyways, so once again, we had insurance basically. The plan seemed pretty much flawless, nothing could go wrong, or could it? Monday, February 3rd. 2020. The operation begins now. On Sunday, every parent got a letter from the school telling them that instead of PE, that day we would have geography. And since parents think geography is a lot more important than PE, students were basically forced to attend the lesson. All our plans about having 40 minutes to complete the mission went south. So we just rolled with it. 8.50 a.m. We met in class 10 minutes before the lesson began so that we could make sure we have everything. We quickly packed up and waited for the lesson to start. The lesson wasn't anything unusual, basic geography stuff, you know, dirt and wind and temperature. Greta Thunberg. 10.40 a.m. Dasha asked her best friend to help her out and both of them made their way to the girls' bathroom while I went to the boys' bathroom. I practiced taping posters under 30 seconds at home, but because of the whole PE thing, I got really nervous and decided to just do the job slowly. Then, about halfway through, two students came into the bathroom and began having a conversation. They didn't enter any of the stalls, so they didn't see me or the posters, and after a few minutes they just left, so I quickly finished the job and went back to class. The girls were late by like 10 minutes because apparently there were a lot of people in the bathroom and they began noticing the posters before the girls actually finished the job, so they had to quote-unquote improvise. 
Either way, the job was done on schedule. 11.45 am, one hour into the heist. I went back to check if the posters were still there and fortunately all of them were in place. Suddenly a group of high schoolers appear and I hide in a stall to pretend to be pissing. When I got out I realized that I haven't taken any good pictures of my work, so I decided to do it now, thinking that no one would suspect me because anyone would do the same thing in my place. So I take the pictures and that's when they begin to actually notice the posters because yes, they actually did not see them before I began taking the pictures. And I'm glad that I did because what followed was the most hilarious minute of my life. They began laughing like fucking hyenas. I'm gonna be honest, there's something so fascinating about watching people laugh at something you did without them knowing you did it. Makes you feel like the guy who wrote the Bible. The most uncredited man in history. 1.55 p.m. Three hours into the heist. I went back to check how the posters were doing once again and the posters seemed to be missing on the fourth stall. While the nice cock poster was probably taken somewhere outside of the bathroom, the too bad poster was found laying on the floor of the third stall behind the toilet. I dragged it back and fixed it, but it didn't look that good anymore. I left the stall and began to wash my hands, and that's when a teacher walks out of the second stall with a grin on his face, looks at me as if about to say something, then just laughs and leaves. Yes, he didn't even wash his fucking hands. What a madman. I checked the stall he went out of and all posters were still in place, so I guess he liked the prank. That's a plus. 2.50 p.m. Four hours into the heist. Our culture teacher got a call during class and when we asked what happened, he said that someone reported an emergency to the teachers and everyone was notified. The consensus was that the emergency was related to the posters in the bathroom. Dasha told me that she checked the bathroom right before the class and all of the posters were gone. We began to grow afraid. The higher-ups found out about the operation and they weren't happy, so the endgame has begun, basically. As soon as the bell rang, I ran to the bathroom to check if the posters were still up and someone took off two more posters. Then some middle school kid, probably 5th or 6th grade, wandered in and said, Oh hey, did you do this? I obviously said no, like... <laughs> do I look like the kind of guy who has this much time on my hands? Nah, I would never do that. And he replied, Oh, okay. Man, whoever did this must be insane. Check this out. And he shows me photos from his phone. And on the photos are the Rouge posters. At least half of them, maybe. Then he tells me one of the craziest things I've ever heard. So apparently, girls got so angry at the posters that they not only took most of them down, they also organized a fucking crusade led by the hall monitors and people with privileges who considered the posters a threat to their positions. They traveled around school, notifying every teacher about the problem, and they kept sending spies everywhere to find the posters and exterminate them. And they didn't just want the posters. No, they wanted all of the posters. Every single one. Even those that were missing. So for example, if you were to go to the bathroom, find the posters, take one and carry it to class that's on the other side of the school, on the first floor, and show them to your classmates, then expect a team of Stardust Crusaders knocking on the door in the next hour ready to detain you. Of course all of it sounded insane and I was like, you joking, this, this, this can't be done, there's, there's no way. And then the thing that happens in every TV show when a character says, that's never gonna happen, happened. The boy hears some girl call him from outside, he immediately goes, Oh shit! Grabs a random poster and leaves. I follow him out of curiosity and find him hanging, handing the poster 
to a group of women. They did not look like JoJo characters to me, but it was probably them. The Starbucks Crusaders. Then they began having a, a conversation with me, if you can call it that. I feel like the professor from the Money High series, because they were like, we're looking for the guy who hung the posters. And I was like, well, good luck with that, because that ain't me. Hmm, is that so? And the boy I talked to earlier quickly said, yeah, yeah, don't, don't worry, I confirmed it. I confirmed it. Not sure if by that he just wanted to get an extra point from them, or he wanted to save me or something, but either way, the girls seemed to trust him, so they let me go. Art culture was our last lesson, so I just left school and went home. Now, at home, I realized that one of the buttons on my jacket was missing, and I think I saw it on the bathroom floor earlier, and like didn't pay attention to it for some reason, and now it could potentially be evidence against me. People kept telling me it's another JoJo reference, whatever that means. But the good news is, the operation was a stunning success. After 5 hours, we still had 4 out of 16 posters left, and the only important piece of evidence was a fucking button, which only proves that I just used the bathroom and nothing else really. The story could have easily ended there. But that would be too boring, wouldn't it? On Tuesday, I found my button in a trash can outside of the bathroom entrance, so I guess there's no need to worry about that anymore, huh? Then after school, I went back to the office and printed even more posters. And I spent the following two days constantly hanging new posters. And the more posters I put up, the more actively the school tried to take them down. So I would put up the posters in the morning, then over the first lesson the school would take all of them down, and I would come back and hang new ones. Since from now on I only focused on the boys' bathroom, the Dust Star Seder crew quickly lost interest and died out. By Friday I had ran out of posters, and by then the school was taking down all 8 posters in a matter of seconds. So I just gave up. Or did I? Well, you see, I knew that they would keep taking down the posters until they stopped appearing. So if I stopped hanging new ones, they would almost immediately breathe a sigh of relief and let their guard down. And that's something I absolutely can't not take advantage of. So I spent the entire weekend cooking up something big. Something that they would probably not expect in a million years. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you Revenge of the Cock 100 posters, both male and female bathrooms, twice as many bathrooms, and even more locations. The plan was simple, however. Just do the same thing we did last Monday, but this time we would paint the posters not only on the stall walls, but also on the stall doors, the entrance door, and hang a few posters on the walls. Not only that, we would also target both the girls and the boys changing room. That's right. One poster inside of each locker, one poster for each locker door, one poster for the entrance to the changing room, and several posters on the walls. It was the magnum opus, an absolute masterpiece, a plan that would either break the school or break us. Coincidentally, the PE teacher made an announcement earlier asking everyone to attend the lesson this time, and even though most people didn't show up again, we did, and we had a reason to, so we wouldn't be suspected. Right before the lesson, I entered the room and quickly did the job. Then I went to the gym, did some push-ups or whatever, and went back. My PE teacher followed me because he wanted to tell me something, and he literally walked through the entire corridor without noticing a single poster, except the one on the entrance door once he reached the end. He took it off, and he looked at it for like an entire minute his brain probably trying to comprehend the meaning as he did not know English. Then he just left. Yeah, without even asking what he wanted to tell me. 
As I was changing back, a few high schoolers came for the next lesson, and they had a similar reaction to the one they had before. Right after that, me and Dasha went to the bathrooms and quickly did the job. It was much harder because the probability of us running into other students was a little higher. In fact, a few students came as I was finishing the fourth stall. The problem was that I left my backpack in the first stall. The door was closed but they could open it any minute because nobody was there and nobody could respond to their question. Uh, is that stall occupied? So I had to crawl under the barrier to get to the first stall before they opened it. Unfortunately, that didn't quite work. I got stuck on the second stall, had to leave the second stall and go to the first stall, and they... Alright, they caught me. That's when I realized that those students were actually three of my classmates. And they were also the students who were the least likely to tell the teachers, aside from, well, Dasha and her friend. So they just laughed it off and let me go. I was safe at least somewhat. I ran to the class, talked to Dasha and her friend, and made sure that the operation had begun. And even though I haven't finished making that one fourth stall, everything else was finished, and the operation officially began. Was it successful? Well... I mean, on one hand, not really, because it only lasted about 30 minutes as the teachers were quick to react and took down all of them. This time, however, they were joined by students. And they weren't messing around this time. The posters were torn apart, cut into hundreds of pieces, thrown out of the windows, onto the floor, or in the trash bins, which were completely filled with paper. They didn't get rid of the posters, they brutally slaughtered them. It was a truly horrifying sight, disgusting even. It made us so depressed, we chose not to continue the attack and use the backup posters we had for a little experiment. So we took the posters, got up to the highest floor in the school, which had no cameras as it was only used as an entrance for the attic, which was locked for students, or in some cases a place for gamers to sit and play Fortnite in collective silence. We climbed the stairs, got to the top, and threw the posters down from above so that the wind carries them around the school onto different floors. And oh boy, did it carry them around. Posters ended up appearing on the other side of the school, on the first floor. That's how far they went. And all of it created mass hysteria and confusion. The girls got so angry they... Okay, no, they did not create another crusade this time, <laughs> they, oh god, they destroyed the posters and the bathrooms, yes, they literally broke down every single stall door, threw all but one outside, and the one they, and the one they did leave inside, they left inside so that it would block access to half of the stalls. <laughs> It was fucking insane. So coming back to my question if the operation was successful. On one hand, it wasn't because it didn't last that long. But on the other hand, it did the most damage out of the missions we have done. I'd say that the pick was probably the highest in history of our school. Nothing more massive has been done before. Especially not in such a short amount of time. It was beautiful. But that was obviously not the end. Like any TV show about how someone manages to get away with something, there is always a season 2 when people try to figure out who to blame and usually find the guy. Because like one great person said, <coughs> Your actions have consequences! <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I just shattered my tonsils. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, the day Revenge of the Cock happened was also the day the atmospheric pressure was the lowest in history in my city, 
and since I'm meteosensical, i.e. I feel bad when the weather is shit, I got slightly sick and didn't come to school on Tuesday. And I'm so glad that I didn't, because apparently a ton of shit happened. Bear with me, there were so many posters that people couldn't keep track of them, and lots of them were picked up by people who would carry them around school, accidentally lose them in another location, then someone else would come in, pick them up, carry them to yet another location, then lose them and the cycle continues. Teachers declared red alert on Tuesday after a few of the posters were discovered. Around this time, some malls told them that the person responsible was from my class. Now since I wasn't in school on Tuesday, the teachers immediately began suspecting everyone from my class but me. I got better rather quickly and went back to school on Wednesday and on the very first lesson our teacher asked us, hey, so someone told me that the whole poster thing was done by someone from this class, anyone wants to speak up? Anyone? After a minute of complete silence, the teacher looked at the three classmates who saw me earlier and continued the lesson. They later approached me and told me that I should have confessed because now the teachers think they are responsible and not me. The thing is, our school has this mafia thing. It's basically a big gang of cool dudes who smoke and drink, maybe take some drugs or something in the bathrooms and talk shit about teachers behind their back and etc. I'm not saying that everyone in there does that, I'm telling you a basic generalization of what it is. And for those who are gonna say, wait, but that's not really a mafia, I can't call it that. Well, if our teachers call our anti-smoking program the Russian KGB, then I'm sure I can call the gang a mafia. That said, those three classmates, who were the only people who actually saw me, are the leaders of the mafia, that's right! And they forced me to sign a deal under which I was required to confess if the teachers ever brought the topic back up or else my cock, correction, my nice cock, would be smashed against a giant fucking boulder. However, the teachers didn't really want to bring the topic back up. They just trusted their intuition and kept watching the free students. Once again, the school was aware of the mafia, since we had an anti-smoking program under which teachers would spy on the gang, but because there is no cameras in the bathrooms, they never really ended up getting enough evidence to inform the police and blah blah blah. But I knew that the whole crackdown on mafia thing could begin any minute and could get a lot worse if one of the free students were to, let's say, fuck up a little in the next week or so. All I had to do was just relax, and I did relax. Until one of the students fucked up a little and the school basically declared a fucking war on the mafia. Yeah, things, uh, things escalated quickly. Teachers started being 10 times more strict, which caused more arguments, which caused both parties to rage quit at a specific moment in the middle of the class. Students would organize protests in the bathrooms, where they would wait and play Russian Uber music loudly, as well as throw around trash. One of the Mafia leaders got sent to the principal after he was found standing next to a plastic bottle. <laughs> to a fucking plastic bottle! So he was just standing there right next to a plastic bottle. They noticed him and like, you're coming with us, mister. Oh, the audacity of some people. The next thing happened to another leader the next day when a teacher heard him swearing. Even though one still remained, the Mafia was essentially powerless. So, by hanging the posters, I basically started an uprising slash civil war and I also caused a collapse of the school Mafia. When the school week ended, I felt excited to come back next week for the first time in... uh... ever! Because I wanted to know where everything was gonna go next! At the time of me recording this, it's been around two weeks since Revenge of the Cock and well, nothing's really happening anymore. The principal made an official document titled Approaching the Final Line, which stated that if anything were to happen, the student would have to be taken to the principal immediately, and I guess it worked? Because incidents stopped happening. I mean, sure, all three leaders have reunited and the Mafia is kind of back in place, but yeah, nothing's the same really. I expect things to heat up again, but that's a story for another video really.
as the conflict isn't about the posters anymore as much as it used to be. People still mention the posters though from time to time, and some people even say that they would love to see them return in one way or another. Speaking of which... Me and the boys have organized a special event that will take place on the 69th day of the year, or in other words, March 9th. The event is called Operation NICE. And the point of it is that you take the nice cockney and the whole concept of hanging it in bathrooms. You're taking it on a whole another level. We're going global, basically. On the day of the operation, March 9th, as I said, the 69th day of 2020, etc, 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 people will go out perform their own little operations, just like the one in this video, and they will hang nice cock posters in the school, university, workplace, etc, etc, bathrooms, take a picture of their work and post it on twitter.com with the hashtag cockheist. It doesn't matter what country you live in or how old you are, if you want, you can translate the memes onto different languages. We already have a Portuguese, Russian, and even Hebrew versions, and more. We're going all out with this, no limits, just pure international gamer fun. If you aren't able to take part in this, or you can't risk getting caught, but you still want to help this, then you can always share it with your friends. If you are not a native English speaker, or you are and you just have friends from other countries, perhaps you know other languages, and then you can share it with those friends, why not? Any form of participating in this event, or just spreading the information would be wonderful. It would mean a lot to me, and it would mean a lot to people who are interested in this. So please, share this video, spread awareness. This might be the last nice cock related event, but if it works out, it will definitely be the greatest. Definitely something that will go in internet history books. So let's do this gamers, let's give them hell, let's make history, on March 9th. 2020. I'll see you there.